Scene three, later in the day at the hospital. We see the hustle and bustle of the hospital behind the upstage screens. Claire sits alone until Elliot, annoyed again by his constant IV companion, pulls himself over to her. Why are you still out here? I don't know if I should go in. How else will she know you're here if you don't? She doesn't need to know I'm here. It's the whole reason people come to the hospital. You go to say you visited. What you've been doing here the past couple of days is completely disrespectful to those that come here to make themselves feel better. It may be better if I stayed out here. She might appreciate that. I know other people would. So you're sitting out here in benefit of others? Jesus Christ, enough already. Elliot gets up and peeks behind one of the screens. Claire watches. Elliot then returns and sits next to her. She's alone. And possibly unconscious. Perfect conditions. Now's your chance to do something for yourself without fucking up this silly scheme of yours. That should be awake. She should be better by now. She isn't. You need to go see her. Elliot rises up once again, struggling a bit with his IV stand. Time to hit the can again, thanks to my friend here. I'll grab you some jello for my roommate. She can't stand all that wiggling, it gets all crazy. Honestly, I think she's in the wrong part of the hospital. Elliot exits stage left. Claire gets up and gets ready to head in for her first visit when another visitor comes from behind her. I'm glad we bumped into each other. Do you miss me? Painfully. I hope that'll never change. I want you to be happy. Me too. The problem is I seem to want you. You can't have me. So you keep saying, but here you are. Here you always are. Yes. Laura, what happened back there? I'm sorry, I just got distracted for a second. By what? By you. Me? I was just watching the reading. I know. It seems it's become a habit for me to look into the audience and see you. To feel you out there, so connected. Connected to me. But it's not about me anymore. It is, but it's also about something else. Can you get used to that? You and I both know how this started between us. We fell for the performance. And I have been constantly trying to live up to that moment because I knew one day someone or something else would replace it and this would be over. You're wrong. You, Laura, mean more to me than what you do on that stage. This relationship is not built on an act that you've constructed to keep me around. It has to be much more than that. Or this is over. Okay. Well, what if I'm a part of this play? First, I'll be thrilled that Juliet's play is actually happening. And also, I know you'll be amazing. Like you always are. Are you sure you're ready for all of this? No. <laughs> but I'm too excited to be terrified of what I don't know. Look how quickly you've become one of us. I'll take that as a compliment.
I want this to work. But I'll leave it up to you. She was great today. Well, except for that bit in scene seven. I'm glad you were listening. Funerals kind of force you to attention. What you do with this play is your decision, Juliet. And what do you think? I think that people come into our lives for a reason. Maybe this play was the reason that Evan came into yours. What does he get? The short end of the stick? What he gets is to be someone very special to someone else. And to have that shared with the world in a profound way. I don't expect what I say to change how you feel. But having this play come into my life has been a gift. It's given me a passion for something that's not attached to my feelings for anyone else. And that has been such a long time coming. I'm very grateful you put your heart out there and wrote this play. It's up to you how much you need to protect it. Whether you change it or not, it won't alter how I feel about it. Have you come to ask me how it went? You were great. I may have turned my eyes toward the stage for a moment. Oh, no, you did not. I did indeed. And I'm glad. That word sounds strangely hopeful coming from you. Well, maybe you're not as cynical as you think. Or maybe life doesn't always deserve the benefit of the doubt. I always hoped you'd write something for me. Why didn't you ever tell me? I don't know. Maybe I was already asking enough of you. I'm sorry, I have to go. You let me know how this turned out? I will. Evan? What if I did have something written for you? Is there another play I don't know about? No. What if it was this play? Evan. Yes. I want to do your play. Carolyn, my apologies. It seems that Evan can't make it on the call today. Not at all. He's interested. He just... He got hung up at a reading. So, let's reschedule for tomorrow. And I promise, he'll be on the call. Did it help to write it? Nope. Well, maybe a little. But I suppose writing a fictional version of the facts only gets you to the door. You still have to walk through it in real life. I don't know if it ever can be over until it's played out. You'll always wonder and fantasize about this person you think you could have had a future with if only you were given the chance. But maybe some things aren't meant to be more than what they are in that moment. When is it okay to say, this is good enough? When the desire for more has been crushed. Or maybe it's over when we let go. And how do we let go? I have no idea.